sport, competing, winning, losing, that all may be considered stuff. But it also can be entertaining, and that's where I step in, because entertainment and sport combined will be represented today on Via Mia by my special guest. The Via Mia Show is sponsored by the following people. Charlie's Chocolate Factory is a family-owned business operating since 1970. Charlie's has molded chocolates for corporate events, weddings, and holidays. For information, call 604-437-8221. Good Cleaning Services has been serving Greater Vancouver since 2008. For more information, contact Ivanka at 778-321-0174. Recording, rehearsal space, voiceovers, video editing in U.S. Minster. For more information, fiascobros.com. Makeup services for television, movie, and photo shoots. For more information, visit victoriawan.com. Cuts and colors in Uptown New Westminster. We welcome our stylist, George of Salon Caliente. For appointment, call 604-544-5104. private investigations, security and alarm systems since 1972. For more information, call of sport we're going to be talking today about uh, especially united with entertainment like i said we've never had on via mia i'd like to introduce my special guest the professional wrestler randy myers hey, hello man. randy how you doing nice to have you here every time when i see you i just have a smile on my face oh that's You're what i like to hear upbeat. <laughs> ah yeah well, you know i'm all about having fun so i know i can tell wrestling you know i wanted to ask you i always thought it's just it's about it's about the violence. Is that is that true? Do well, I see it right? It's definitely based in violence, but over the years we've taken it to more of an entertainment base. Mm -hmm. um, as you can tell by yeah. my look, that I'm not necessarily here to uh, strike fear into anyone's heart. Mm -hmm. That I am here for. Uh, it's like a fusion of fun and fighting. Yeah, that's what I like. That's what I wanted you to come here because you combine it with entertainment. You add entertainment into it. How do you do it? Um, I've always been I've always been involved in the entertainment field, and I've always been involved in wrestling. So I kind of, the more entertainment I could bring to wrestling, the more the more I feel that I can actually deliver. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I've had matches anywhere from the most violent matches you could imagine to like a four corner barbed wire death match where I was getting wrapped up in barbed wire and a bloody mess by the end. And then I've also had matches that are just the complete polar opposite that are just oh fun. God, Randy. Where I have them uh, <laughs> synchronized to music and well, have music style matches where every song within the match corresponds to a move that I'm doing. That is interesting. Never heard that before. Yeah, so I try and uh, I try and push the boundaries mm -hmm. of professional wrestling. And we have also contact. We can find you right as well on um, the Weirdo Hero. Yeah, the Weirdo is and my website. We can also see it. So, um, how long you've been in this wrestling world? I've been in the wrestling world for 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, well, you say it as if it was your whole your life, but it's almost like that. You're yeah, what, 17 is. or something. Uh, well, I'm 32 <laughs> years old now. Yeah, so I started at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's almost been next year or like two more years, and it's half. It'll be half my life. So. And and what made you a professional wrestler? What made me a professional wrestler? Well, I was always interested in acting and the entertainment side of things, um, but I had real trouble following a script uh, and following lines put out and having the idea of having someone else write my character for me was never really that intriguing to me. So I thought in wrestling you got to come up with your character, mm -hmm. you got to come up with the lines you say, and you got to come up with your mini stories as well. So it seemed like. Not only do I get to perform, but I've also got the creative aspect of writing. So yeah. that kind of really intrigued me and brought me into You're it. very creative. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. And um, you started to talk about uh, how the wrestling, what 
what you've been through. Uh, how many injuries and wounds, if you, if you can count? Oh, yeah, it's pro it probably is countless. Like, there's not a match that goes by that I don't have some sort of, like, bruise or scrape or something afterwards. My biggest injury to date would probably be uh, a broken leg. Mm -hmm. which I, uh, I suffered in a practice right before a match. Uh, my coach told me to go to the top rope and perform a drop kick, oh. a move I was very not comfortable doing. Um, on a, a performer, I wasn't comfortable doing it on. So I came in and I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't fulfill my end of the bargain and I came down and yeah, broke my leg. And that was 10 weeks out of the ring. And, and nothing throws you off. Mm, I wouldn't say it doesn't throw <laughs> me off, but it take a lot more than a broken bone to keep me out of that ring. Wow. I can I can I can tell that what you when you started to talk that how many wounds injuries how many oh yeah there's a, traces of the pain and everything you had to go through. yeah it's we all have our pain you know what I mean for yeah. the for passion you've kind of got to be willing to give mm -hmm. that little bit more mm -hmm. Does, do you think that made you stronger definitely made me stronger yeah. when I first started wrestling I was 135 pounds straight out of high school um, I'd never been in a fight before in my life I had. I had a drama background, so I by no means was I an athlete. No, no, looking at you, really, you don't belong to the wrestling. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a bit of a stretch. It <laughs> is a bit of a stretch. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I kind of, from there, I kind of got, took my lumps. I was trained in Calgary, Alberta, in the Hart Family Dungeon, which is one of the most notorious wrestling schools on the planet. Mm -hmm. And they definitely take, uh, take boys and turn them into men. And... Uh, they beat the crap That's out of right. me for for years and years and years, and took it out of my hide and. So instead of going, instead of going to the army, you'd rather do this. Right? Yeah, I guess that's kind of what happened. Yeah, I guess I they didn't make me shave my head, so mm -hmm. that's why. Yeah, well, I know that you also do your shows, and that's sort of combined with wrestling, right? Indeed, yeah. Yeah. So how how do you do that? Do you uh, script your show? Well, what we do is um, we get together with an opponent, and uh, we'll. But we'll put together a short match. We'll kind of, depending on what the storyline that's been given to us. Mm -hmm. So um, we know that I'm normally playing the good guy and my opponent will play the bad guy. And then we'll come up with uh, what we think will, what, what kind of attributes do they bring to the table and what kind of attributes do okay. I bring to the table. And, and how you can balance yeah, them. Yeah, see how we can kind of make a... Okay, so I know that you're into, like I said, you're creative. You do your shows. You join other shows, other, other people's shows when they script it. Do they always have the wrestling in it? Um, I do a lot of, my main focus is wrestling right now, but I also do some improv shows as well. So out in Port Coquitlam, I'm part of Second Story Improv. Wow. And I've been working with them for the last two years and doing shows out there. So not all my shows are necessarily wrestling related, but they're definitely, the majority of them would be, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, if we stay in the wrestling world, who do you think your audience is? Um, my oh, Jeez, it can be anyone. Like, we run shows here in Kitsilano at the Russian Cultural Center for Elite Canadian Championship Wrestling. And our demographic is anything from, like, six-year-old kids to... We have a native couple that's been coming to the shows for, like, 30 years, to wrestling shows for 30 years, and they're in their 60s. So anywhere in between, too, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'd say our average demographic is normally uh, your 18 to 30-year-old male kind of demographic, mm -hmm. but... Very. So you have a young, young. Yeah, we have audience. a very, uh, mm -hmm. very young audience. Mm -hmm. But I don't have many people come to the show that say that they didn't have a great time. Oh yeah. Wrestling's one of those things that everyone kind of has a preconceived notion of in their head without even going to a show before. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a live show, it's just uh, over the top. Yeah. So you, so you said you're taking acting, also improv. Do you, do you take that all? And you take it. You take it. Why? You're trying to escape the wrestling world, or do you want to? Do you want to unite it? I kind of. I want to add as much as I can yeah. to the wrestling world. Like I said, everyone brings different pieces to the puzzle, and I think that my piece of the puzzle is dramatics and mm -hmm. theatrics and stuff like that. So the more dramatic and theatrical I can be, the more I can push the envelope of wrestling. Yeah. I mean, that's a great combination. It's I think something, so. something, something unique. Something that not many people would do. Uh, I'd like to go through some of the pictures you've sent. Oh, for sure, yeah. I, I really enjoy them, and why don't we just share it with everybody else? So what, what is this? Uh, this first hold is, uh, it, this is a move being put on me by one Dave Bishop, who is one of the most fierce competitors within the reigns of elite Canadian championship wrestling. And just to show how much pain you have to go through, really, to... To, you know, to make it to the top. You don't look very happy there. Yeah, no. But then there's also, like, it, it, just like Christmas, it's mm -hmm. better to give than, than to receive. <laughs> so here's a picture of me giving a move out to uh, one of the managers who's been a thorn in my side for, no, for many months. No, I wouldn't like to be the guy in the blue. Yeah, no, you definitely wouldn't want to no. be. 
And then there you go. See, uh, I won. That's me holding my first ever uh, Canadian championship above my head, nice. or the elite uh, championship above my head, and I won that at the Commodore Ballroom that okay. we had our very first show in January two years ago in front of a sellout crowd, and Ooh, I won the ladder shot. match. Yeah, it's a yeah. great. It was yeah. a great moment in my Both, life. Too. I believe. And then, like, it may be all for the belt, but you know, I do it for Your the audience? kids. Your audience? Yeah, that's a big part okay. of the audience. Um, so you do uh, sometimes you do you do events for the children? Yeah, definitely. Um, Any time that there's children in the audience, you'll see that we bring a little bit more out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's a bigger smile on my face, and of course. and those smiles. How can I not? <laughs> and this is a picture of my improv. Me and my improv crew actually. Uh, so this is a picture before a show before Your we class? went out there. Yeah. Oh. So this is the group of of rebels and mm -hmm. ruffians that I'm hanging around with out in Poco. Mm -hmm. And then there's a poster for my upcoming movie uh, that we released at the Rio. And uh, it's a movie about professional wrestling and kind of the turmoils that kind of come along with being an entertainer. When you said upcoming, is it something that we will be able to see actually? Yeah, um, we had a one showing at the Rio, but we're starting to put it into, like submit it for festivals and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And the weirdohero.com can lead you right to where They're our all next information show will we can, we can We can find it For there, sure, right? yeah. Wow. Uh, just tell, like, I wanted to ask you before I saw those pictures, what makes your show uh, different or interesting? I think I already got the answer. Yeah, I think it's a safe bet. Um, I, wrestling is such a full, it's like a circus almost. You know, we've got high flyers, we've got your big guys, we've got your small guys, we've got your ladies, we've got your entertainment, and it's a full night. You mm -hmm. know, it's a definitely, um, it, it's just a, a one, of a, one, one of a kind entertainment, form mm -hmm. of entertainment, where... If any other, if you go to a play, you go to see a rock band, you go to see a comic, as soon as you start heckling, they kick you the right, right out of really. there, right? Okay. But at wrestling, we encourage hecklers. Mm -hmm. We want people to take, <laughs> to take out their week's worth of a hostility out on our bad guys, you know? So it, it adds to our show. Uh, how do you encourage them? Um, just by doing heinous actions in mm -hmm. front of them, we'll have the bad guys um, just really rile them up. And yeah, anything that you've gotten. And you don't, you don't hold those signs quiet? Yeah, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, we won't, as long as you're staying in your seat within mm -hmm. some regards, and yeah. yeah, as long as we're not touching you, you're not touching us, let us have it, you right. know what I mean? Uh, if you've got something you wanted to say to your boss all week but can't mm -hmm. say to him, you can definitely <laughs> come down to his show and say it to one of us. Okay, I'll see you sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a short break for now because we have much more to hear and see. The Via Mia Show is sponsored by the following people. Charlie's Chocolate Factory is a family-owned business operating since 1970. Charlie's has molded chocolates for corporate events, weddings, and holidays. For information, call 604-437-8221. Good Cleaning Services has been serving Greater Vancouver since 2008. For more information, contact Ivanka at 778-321-0174. Recording, rehearsal space, voiceovers, video editing in U.S. Minster. For more information, fiascobros.com. Makeup services for television, movie, and photo shoots. For more information, visit victoriawan.com. Cuts and Colors in Uptown New Westminster. We welcome our stylist, George of Salon Caliente. For appointment, call 604-544-5104. Private investigations, security and alarm systems since 1972. For more information, call 604-251-2121. Well, we are back with Via Mia and Randy Myers, uh, professional res wrestler today. Um, Randy, before we got to the break, um, I was listening to you about acting and improvising and all, all the stuff that's part of entertainment. I know you said you have your shows, you script your shows, but you also join other, other people's shows. Um, what is easier or what is more natural for you to follow, your own or you, you pre prefer to challenge yourself and, and learn something else and step into somebody else's shoes? Well, originally, like I was saying before, um, the, the thought of following someone else's script mm -hmm. really scared the hell out of me. <laughs> and 
But over the years, I've kind of come to terms with, you know, sometimes it's easier to let them do the writing and then just come in as the performer. And then at the end of the day, I don't need to worry about anything but my performance. I don't yeah. need to worry about other people's side of things. Mm -hmm. So um, I, as much as I do like having a lot of creative control and stuff like that and, and seeing my ideas come to fruition, uh, I like to help other people's ideas too. So... Well, I think there are pros and cons and everywhere, right? If you do your own show, if you script it, there are your words. It's really you, right? Yeah. If you follow somebody else, it's more challenging. Definitely is. Isn't it? You have to kind of hunt for that, mm -hmm. for those words to become true within yeah. inside of yourself yeah. rather than the words you wrote in for yourself. Yeah. You know that they're coming from, That's they're true. Coming from you, right? Yeah. Okay, so I guess that you can balance it. So you probably you, you enjoy, uh, enjoy both. Um, so you are so much involved with entertainment and something is telling me you're trying to replace the wrestling. Oh, really? <laughs> that, that's okay. Um, I, I, wrestling is, is not something you can do forever, mm -hmm. to be fair. Um, I don't want to be one of those guys that's 60 years old still putting on a pair of spandex because no one wants to see a 60-year-old <laughs> man in spandex trying to pretend he still looks hot. <laughs> So well, I realize there's got to be an exit plan at some mm -hmm. point. As much as wrestling is my passion and it's something I just love, there's many, many things I love. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want it to necessarily... I don't want to be the old guy in the singlet. I don't want to be the old guy who's taken one too many falls. You well, know you're I mean? not closing any doors, right? Exactly, so, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's good. If you can be flexible and if you can do lots in many, many spheres, it's great. Yes. Yeah. Why but not? They, they all have some, one thing in common, right? Exactly. Always the, uh, the option to be over the top and yeah. to be entertaining people. Mm -hmm. As long as I can put smiles on people's faces at the end of the day, that yeah. puts a smile on my face. And you said that you're in improvising classes, you're learning this. First, I don't know, I always thought that improvising has to be something we are born with. I didn't know that we can actually learn it, to be witty and, and fast and... I think it's a muscle that you kind of have to naturally have somewhat, mm -hmm. but I think just like any other muscle, it can be fine-tuned. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's what it is, yeah. tune it, right? I always thought that, nobody, that you had to be born an athlete, to tell mm -hmm. you the truth, too. Oh, really? And then when I finally, like after 15 years of, be, of coaxing my body up, being able to become quite athletic myself, yeah. but I didn't have that to start with. Mm -hmm. So I do have a little bit of a natural improvising bug within me so now I'm just trying to exercise that muscle yeah. as much as possible. Well talking about exercises I thought that uh, to ask you uh, one question but I'll do it after that short clip what you sent because that's something that I like to see. It's oh excellent. About a minute or so let's see it. Wrestler and how fun. For the last 12 years I've had fun. You might know me by my professional wrestling name. Fabulous Frankie. This isn't just Frankie. Because this is him. That, that's me. That's me. Okay. I have an amazing wife and awesome fans and a great opportunity just at my fingertips. They see what everyone else does too, Frankie. You're a champion. We like you, Frankie. Right now, I'm ready to put on the best show of my life. Once I get a hoist that belt above my head, it'll all have been worth it. Right? You have failed at everything. Everything you have done in your life, I am not gonna let you fail at this. Do it! Jump! Are you really standing at the, the edge of the No, cliff? we were not standing oh on the edge God. of the cliff there. That was all some fancy camera work. With my um, fear of heights when I saw the picture, well, you are, you know, you are in amazing shape. You obviously exercise on a daily basis. Thank you. Yeah, I try. Well, I'm in the gym, yeah, right? five to six days a week for yeah. sure, yeah. Um, so do you train yourself? Do you train others? I do, actually. I have a class out in Surrey that we're teaching the next generation of professional wrestlers to come up and kind of teach them the sides of what I have to show them entertainment-wise and moves inside the ring. Mm -hmm. So do you... Okay, so you said you teach. You have, you're finding your students. How do you find it? Or how do they find you? How do I find the students? Well, my two favorite students, uh, I was at the gym one day, and a stud walks in the gym, and he caught my eye. And I mean, I'm, I don't, you know, <laughs> I have no problem to say a good-looking good man or a good-looking <laughs> woman. But this guy walks in the gym, and he just caught my eye right away. And I said, that guy's got that it factor. Mm -hmm. Five seconds later, his twin brother walks in. <laughs> And I thought, I have to. I can't hold back any longer. I've got to go talk to these boys. Are, were you waiting for the third one? I was waiting for the third one. And alas, you know, I didn't. he didn't come, but, you know, maybe he's still hiding yeah. around the corner somewhere. Well, you have them here. I do actually so, have my twins you know, here. I, you know, I'd like to see them working with you because that's why we have the meds. You need to show me some You want to see some wrestling? Stuff. Can you please do no that? No problem, no problem. 
So I guess you will have to s step to your uh, Definitely. place. Definitely, we'll bring out. So, so this is uh, Patrick and Chris. This is, this, was, this is Chris, come on, both guys come out here. I can't remember who is who. Yeah, I can have a hard time remembering who is who, but that's why I always ask them first. <laughs> All right, so um, first I'm going to be starting with Chris here. Uh, we're going to just demonstrate some simple wrestling moves. So this is the start of a match is normally starts with a lockup. So boom, collar and elbow. Then I'm going to reach underneath, and I'm going to give him what is called a head mare. Ah, that hurt. Boom. Set him up. I'm going to lock in the seated abdominal stretch. Now remember, do not try these holds at home. <laughs> All right, this is called the seated abdominal stretch. And what it's doing is it's applying a lot onto the lats and onto the oblique muscles right here on the side of Chris. The next hold I will show you is one made famous by the Iron Sheik. It is called the camel clutch. Yeah! And not long is this hold on before you'll see your opponent tap out. Luckily enough, I brought a spare. So we'll get Chris out of here for now. Um, we'll get Patrick to lay down on his back. And I will show you guys what is called here the figure four. This hold has been made famous by Ric Flair. Turn around. Put that leg over top of there. And then apply pressure. So again, that move works over the lower legs as well as a famous move done by a Canadian known as the sharpshooter. This is, go. they don't look very happy. No, correct? they aren't necessarily happy, but this is what they signed up for. And I've met their mother, <laughs> and, they, and her, their mother loves me, so I think it's they, okay. They signed for this, and they obviously pay for this. Yeah, they paid for this. <clears throat> no, they're paying know. for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how long they're going to hang out there. You know, I'm just, I don't know, do you want to you, pick up your, yeah. your uh, it was okay? students? Okay. Or are they still okay to walk? Yeah. Are you okay, Patrick and Chris? Somehow. <laughs> Now I understand is how wide they are twins. They have to help each exactly, other. Exactly. No way they can be only one of them. Totally, totally. <laughs> Tell me, what is this? I don't know how many people uh, would go through this, but yes, I understand. You, you just put entertainment into it and stuff. Um, what is the biggest sacrifice being part of the wrestling world? Um, I'd say time. The amount of time you have to put into training, mm -hmm. the amount of time you have to put into being at shows. Mm -hmm. And the time you have to be away from your family, I would say, is the biggest thing. Yeah. I, that, I, I thought that probably the family, right? Your family, the close, close oh. people. and Also putting your family through that. Um, it was uh, fairly stressful on your staff to see me put moves on Chris and Patrick there. Um, when it's your family right there and they're in the audience and they're seeing you go through these things, it mm -hmm. takes its toll there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, well, I have probably a couple more questions. Just want to know, is there any, I'm sure there would be, a uh, particular moment or event that is very memorable for you and something that you won't forget? Oh, geez. I've, I've been very fortunate within, like, the realm of professional wrestling. Um, I've met lots of my heroes, and I've got to work with a bunch of them. My favorite moment would probably be, or the moment that stands out the strongest, though, would be when I got to work with my hero, Mick Foley, who was oh. my... When I was a little kid, a little whippersnapper, he was always the guy I looked mm -hmm. up to. He was the guy who brought a lot of theatrics to wrestling. He was the guy who had an over-the-top character. He was the guy who pushed the boundaries all the time. So when I got to work one-on-one -on -one with him, and that was really the moment that I, was, I felt like, this is all worth it. Well, well, I'm glad you had the chance to be with somebody who admire or look Definitely, up to. yeah. Well, unfortunately, the time is telling us that we're going to be finishing soon, and I have two things to ask, Randy. Before I do, uh, we have still that advertisement for um, uh, the 
promotion for the show what's happening in Columbia Theater on December 12th. And that is my friend Susan and I, uh, we are opening a big event, uh, ABBA time, for Rick Valiant, who is going to be celebrating Frank Sinatra's 100th, 100th, 100th birthday. That's how old he would have been if he was still around. Um, Randy, we have time for two things. Number one, you need to sign this cup because I want to have your name no on, problem. The, on the Via Mia cup. And when you're done, I have a gift for you from uh, one of our sponsors. Charlie's Chocolate Factory is sending you this beautiful chocolate, which you just see. And I want you to enjoy them. And it's a kind of thank you for you to be here. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> Why, thank you. You're welcome. Look at that. So sweet. <laughs> it, I, I'm sure it will be sweet. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I can, I can yeah. work out with them, and then I, I can eat them afterwards. Yeah, it's my cheat sure. meal. Exactly. Well, Randy, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank to Chris and Patrick if they're still around. Yeah, I think and, they'll be okay. Yeah, good. And uh, thank you for for watching the Amia show, and we'll be with you again next week. Bye bye. <laughs>